Hi, my name is Ryan Sloan, and I want to welcome you back to the Gear Cage. Uh, a lot has happened since I went on vacation and this whole pandemic broke out, and I wanted to take a sidebar from some of our regular content that we're working on that's coming up here and actually answer a few commonly uh, asked questions in recent days. So one of the questions that I've been getting a lot from my customers that work in the house of worship market is, okay, we can't meet in our congregation in person. What if we have them come to our parking lot like a drive-in movie theater and broadcast an FM signal to them? And in fact, that's a great idea. Uh, the only problem is um, the market for FM transmitters in the United States that would be appropriate for this is probably like this. And with what's going on right now, the demand is probably like this, maybe more like this even, completely off the scale. So the problem is it can be hard to find an FM transmitter right now. And in fact, many of the models that you'll find are actually from China. So hopefully they're manufacturing and shipping them over here. Um, but I'll try to provide a few links to some um, transmitters that I found in the notes below so you can actually hopefully click and maybe find one for your service. Now, uh, people calling often have questions about choosing the right transmitter or choosing a product that will work. And in fact, uh, at my day job, we actually don't sell any FM transmitters, but uh, it happens to be how I got into the audio business when I was a teenager. Uh, I was very much so into radio and started my own kind of small uh, radio station when I was probably 15, 16 or so. So I still have some of that equipment that I've had over the years. Um, here, and I just wanted to talk a little bit about what it is and how it works. So bear with me. The main thing you're going to need, and you're going to see so many parallels between this and like a, a handheld wireless microphone system, which is really interesting to me. But the main thing you're going to need to broadcast your church service like a drive-in movie theater would, would do is an FM transmitter. And in fact, that's really almost all you need beyond the gear that you already use day in and day out. An FM transmitter will just take whatever you're putting into it and send it out over a tunable FM radio frequency range. So think, you know, 89.1 uh, megahertz all the way up to 107.9 megahertz. That's the typical tuning range of your car stereo. That's what these are made to broadcast in. And you can actually see there's not a lot to them. They're actually fairly uh, simple devices. Um, they're made so you can lock in a specific tuning range. This particular device actually has dip switches here that will let you tune to an open frequency. And then it holds that with a, um, a crystal lock. I think it's a phase crystal loop or some something around there um, <laughs> to hold the frequency. And then it just broadcasts out on that frequency range for you. Now, um, a big thing to know is that it doesn't require that much power to get a decent amount of distance. So for instance, a one watt transmitter could potentially get you, you know, a mile or two in all directions if you have good line of sight, meaning the antenna is placed up high uh, in plain view to things down below kind of an interesting thing because when we're talking about PA systems, we're actually talking about kind of a different type of power and a PA system might be 10,000 watts, for instance. So to think about one watt of broadcast power being able to go that far is, is kind of intriguing. This particular box is actually made to go uh, anywhere from one watt up to 30 watts. So with good line of sight and everything, you can technically get about 10 or 15 miles of range out of this box. But I know what you're thinking, hey, this is great. Everyone can just stay home. I'll broadcast my church service to them all in their homes. Not so fast. That's definitely extremely illegal, according to the FCC. So please don't do that. Uh, and if you want to know what happens if you try to do that, go watch the old movie, Pump Up the Volume, and you'll see kind of how that, uh, how that translates. Um, so... Really, that's what you need to make this happen. Uh, there are two components, maybe three, I guess, if we're being technical to doing this. So again, one, we have the radio transmitter itself. Um, on the back of it, you'll see we have RCA inputs over here, actually. So we have RCA inputs over here that we're going to run our signal into. 
And um, you can see the audio card here that takes the audio in and basically processes it through the system. Then it goes through the, uh, the frequency modulation board and the amplifier section and the antenna. And those are the other two components you're going to need, uh, an antenna cable and the antenna itself. Uh, it's a dipole style antenna um, with the magic of editing here. I'm gonna flash to that right now. So take a look at that, um, that antenna. You'll need something like that to broadcast the signal out. Um, most of these transmitters will actually get damaged if you turn them on without the antenna plugged in. So keep that in mind. Uh, it's a critical thing to think about when you're buying a transmitter if you can find one. So other than that, that's all there is to it. Uh, once you configure your frequency, set your power, and hook your antenna up, you're good to go. You're broadcasting, you're up and running. If you have any questions, put them down in the comments below, and I hope you found this a little bit helpful. I'm Ryan Sloan for The Gear Cage. We'll see you again here soon.